Hi guys, today we're going to be doing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Part Part 4 by J.K. Rowling. We are on page 25. And we are going to end on page... Wait. Do we need to end on page 31 because... Okay, we're going to end on page 31. Okay, because this is the next chapter, so we're going to end on it, okay? This is such a little one. Okay. I don't know. They don't, said Harry. It was only a dream, but he wished that the, he hadn't said anything. If there was one thing he, the Dursleys hated even more than his asking questions, it was the talk about everything acting in a way it shouldn't. No matter if it was getting... No matter it was getting, was in a dream or even in a cartoon, they seemed to have, think he might get dangerous ideas. It was a very sunny Saturday at the zoo. It was crowded with families. The Dursleys brought Doodley and Piper's ch little large chocolate ice creams at the entrance. And then, because... As the smiling lady in the van had asked Harry what he did before he could they could hurry him away they bought him a cheap lemon ice pop it wasn't bad either Harry thought licking it was a watched a gorilla scratching its head looking remarkably like Dooley except that it wasn't blonde. Harry was the best morning he'd ever had in a long time. He was he was careful to walk a little way apart from the doodly so that doodly and Piper's who were starting to get bored with the animals by lunchtime wouldn't fall back by their favorite hobby of hating him. They ate the zoo in the zoo restaurant, and when Doodley had a tantrum because his knickerbocker glory didn't have enough ice cream on top, Uncle Vernon bought him another one. Harry was all was allowed to finish it the first, so Harry felt awkward. that they should have known it was all too good for, to last. After lunch, they went to the reptile house. It was cool and dark in there with lit windows all over the walls. Be behind the, the glass, all sorts of lizard snakes and, and were crawling, and, crawling inside. As, slithering over bits of wood and stone. Doodly and Piper wanted to see a huge poisonous copra, cobras and thick. The man crushing pythons. I'm gonna open the door behind me. Okay. Okay. Doodly quickly found a large snake in the place. It had wrapped its buddy body twice around Uncle Vernon's car and crushed it into a trash can. But at the moment, it didn't look like in a mood. In fact, it was a s fast asleep. Doodly stood with his nose press pressed against the against the glass, start staring at glistening brown coils. Make him move, he whined at his father. Uncle Vernon tapped on the glass, but the snake didn't budge. Do it again, Doodley ordered. Uncle Vernon rapped on the rapped on the glass with his muddy knuckles, but 
but the snake just snoozed off. This is boring, Doodly moaned. He shuffled away. Harry moved in front of the tank and looked indeedly at the snake. It wouldn't have been a surprise if it had died of boredom itself. No company except stupid people drumming their fingers on the grass, trying to disturb it all day long. It was worse than having a, having a cupboard as a bedroom where there was only one visitor was on Petunia hammering the door to wake you up. At least he got to visit the rest of the house. The snake suddenly opened its bendy eye. Slowly, very slowly, it raised its head until its eyes were at levels with Harry. It winked. Harry stared and then looked quietly around to see if anyone was watching. They weren't. He looked at the snake and winked too. The snake jerked its head around Uncle Vernon and Doodly, then raised its eyes to the ceiling and gave it a good that said, I get that all the time. I know Henry murdered through the glass. He wasn't sure the snake could hear them. It must be very annoying. The snake Vern just lay, where are you coming from anyway? Where do you come from anyway? Harry asked. The snake jabbed its tail in a little sign next to the glass. Harry peered at it. Boba Constructor Brazil. Was it nice there? The book of Boba Constructor jabbed its tail to the sign again so Harry could read on the spinsman was bred in the zoo. Oh, I see. So you've never been to Brazil. The snake shook its head, a defining about behind Harry. It made both of them jump. Jump. Doodly, Mr. Doodly, come look at the snake. You won't believe what it's doing. Doodly came waddling toward them as fast as he could. Out of out of the way, you. He punched Harry on the ribs. Caught by surprise, Harry fell hard on the concrete floor. What came next? Next happened so fast, no one saw how it happened. One second, Piers and Dooley were leaning right up close to the glass. The next, they leaped back in howls of hor horror. Harry sat up and gasped. The glass front of the boba constructor tank had vanished. The great snake was uncoiling itself rapidly. Slithering around the floor, people throughout the reptile house screamed and started running for the exit as the snake slid swiftly past them. Harry could have sworn a low hissing voice. Brazil, here I come. Thanks, Amago. The keeper of the reptile house was in shock. But the glass, he kept saying, where did the glass go? The zoo director made made Aunt Petunia a cup of strong sweet tea and apologized over and over again. Piers and Doozily could only gibber as far as Harry had seen that. The snake hadn't done anything except snap playfully at their heels. As it passed, but telling nearby bit off, bitten off his legs while Pierre was swearing, it tried to squeeze him to death. But worst of all, for Harry, at least, the peers coming down enough to say Harry was talking to it. Weren't you, Harry? Uncle Vernon waited till Piers was safe and out of the house. Before started starting, the Harry was so angry he couldn't speak. He managed to say, go, cupboard, stay, no meals, before he collapsed in his chair. chair. And Aunt Petunia had to run and get him large brandy. Harry lay in his dark cupboard much late, later, wishing he, ha he had a watch. He didn't know what time it was, and he didn't, well, couldn't be sure the dirt sleepers were asleep yet until they were. 
he risked sneaking. He couldn't risk sneaking to the kitchen for some food. He lived with the Dursley almost ten years, ten miserable, miserable years, as long as he could remember. Ever since he did, he was a ba- been a baby, and his parents had died in that in, died in that car crash. He couldn't remember being in the car when his parents died. Sometimes when he when he strained his memory during long f- hours in his cupboard, he came up with a strange vision, a blind flash of green light and a burning pain on his forehead. This was most this he'd suppose was a crash dot though he couldn't imagine the green light came from, he said. Couldn't remember where his parents at all. His aunt and uncle never spoke to him about it. Of course, it was forbidden to ask the questions. There were no photographers of them in the house. There, When he had been younger, Harry dreamed and dreamed of some unknown relation coming f- from far away. But it had never happened. The Dursleys were on his own family. Yet sometimes he thought, or maybe hoped, the stranger from the se- street seemed to know very strange strang- strangers were there were too. A tiny man in a violet top had bowed once to him once while out shopping with Aunt Petunia and Dooley. After uh, after asking D- Harry furiously, he knew buying anything. A wild-looking old woman dressed in a gr- all, all in green had waved merrily and once on a bus. A bald man the other day, and they walked away. Without a word, the strangest thing about all these people was the way they seemed to vanish in second. Harry tried to get a closer look at school. No, Harry had no one. Everyone ha- knew that Dudley's gang hated the odd Harry Potter in his badged old clothes and the broken glasses, and no one liked to disagree with D- Dudley's gang. We're finished with Harry Potter part part four. Remember, if you want to see part five, then you should go subscribe, turn on the notifications, and like. Like. Bye.